If you're thinking of setting up a saltwater aquarium, you can probably get a good idea of the initial setup costs by simply listing all of the equipment you want and choosing that which fits in your budget. But working out the ongoing running costs is a lot more difficult. So today I'll give you a full breakdown of the running costs of two of my aquariums so you can get a good idea of the ongoing costs of running a saltwater tank. The two tanks I'm using for this video are an established four foot by two foot tank that holds just over 100 gallons or 400 liters and a six month old nano tank that's less than two feet long at 56 centimeters and after displacement holds around 10 gallons or 40 liters. I've broken the cost down into six categories and I'll keep a running tally at the bottom of the screen for both tanks and I will of course list the full breakdown at the end. Now to make sure I've got everything right, I've drawn up a list which I'll be referring to as I go. And all the costs I'll list are in pounds sterling, so this will only be a rough guide outside of the UK. Although you should be able to roughly substitute pounds for dollars US and euros, though an item that costs 100 pounds will probably cost around 100 dollars US or 100 euros, so you'll still be able to get a rough guide outside of the UK. First up then is water. On both of these tanks, I need fresh water to replace the water that evaporates throughout the day, as well as salt water for my weekly water changes. I filter all of the water I use myself using this massively over the top RODI filter. And because I'm not on a water meter, the water itself is free but I do have to replace the filters at various points. I spend 90 pounds a year on filter cartridges and membranes and around 65 pounds a year on DI resin, which gives a total of 155 pounds a year or 12 pounds 92 a month. Now apportioning the split between these two tanks is a little bit fiddly. The cartridges and membrane need replacing every six to 12 months. So I'd still incur those costs regardless of the tank size, but a nano tank alone would need a smaller filter than mine and would use much less DI resin. So I'm gonna split the costs two thirds for the large tank and a third for the small tank, which means I spend £8.53 per month on the big tank and £4.26 per month on the small tank. In terms of salt mix for the water changes, I use Tropic Marin Pro Reef Salt Mix, which is one of the most expensive options on the market and which costs £80 for a 25 kilogram bucket. I change a little over 10% of the water every week on both tanks, which means I use 2,250 grams of salt per week on the large tank and 210 grams of salt per week on the small tank. So I spend £31.20 per month on salt for the 100 gallon tank and just £2.91 per month for the nano tank. So that's water covered, now let's move on to filtration. In my main tank, I have 17 fish, not many of which are small, which means I have quite extensive filtration. I have an automatic filter roller, an algae refugium, a protein skimmer, and two phosphate reactors. Whereas my nano tank has just two clownfish and a small goby, so I just have a filter sponge and a small bag of phosphate media. The filter roll on my main tank lasts about 40 days and costs £11 to replace, which means it costs £8.36 per month. And I get through about two tubs of phosphate media a year at £32 each. So the monthly cost for phosphate media is £5.53 on my main tank, which gives a total filtration cost of £13.69. The filter floss on my nano tank is dirt cheap and costs about £10 for a six month supply, which works out at £1.67 per month. And I use so little phosphate media that it's hardly worth mentioning, but I estimate that I use around 10% of what I do on my main tank. So that's 53 pence per month, which gives a total of £2.20 per month for filtration for the nano tank. Next up is dosing supplements. And as you might expect, my main tank that is packed full of corals uses a lot more calcium and alkalinity than my wee nano tank. To replace the elements my main tank uses, I dose around three liters per day of Kalkwasser, but because I have so many corals, I need to supplement that quite heavily with additional dosing liquids. So I also add 70 ml per day of ATI Essentials Plus. Now Kalkwasser is ridiculously cheap and cost me just £1.17 per month. But the dosing liquids are a lot more expensive and cost me £23.93 per month. I also dose one trace element in the form of manganese and a mere two milliliters per day of that stuff cost me £12.16 a month, which brings the grand total of everything I dose on my main tank to £37.26 per month. On my nano tank, I don't currently dose anything as I only have a few small coral frags, so water changes alone are tidying me over for now. So I'll list the cost as zero for now, and even when I do start dosing, I'll be using Kalkwasser, so the monthly cost should be just pennies. And of equal importance, the dosing is testing. For alkalinity, I have an automated tester on my main tank, and the running costs for that are the reagent it uses for every test and the calibration solutions I use to keep its pH probe accurate. 
Now the costs here vary depending on how often I test and how often I calibrate the machine, but on average my tester runs four times per day and I reckon I probably calibrate the probe probably every other month at the absolute most, so alkalinity testing costs me £10.50 per month on the main tank. On the nano tank, I test alkalinity once a week manually, so all I need to do is buy new reagents, which cost £24 for a year's supply, so that's £2 a month. I also test nitrate and phosphate on both tanks. Over the last 12 months, I've tested those parameters once a fortnight on average, which means I've spent £3 per month on each tank to test nitrate and phosphate. Now I also occasionally send off a water sample to a lab for a more in-depth ICP test. I only do that on my main tank though, and I reckon I do three ICP tests a year on average, so that works out at five pounds per month. And finally, I do of course test salinity on both tanks. Now the only cost of that is calibration solutions, and I reckon I get through around one a month, which puts the cost of testing salinity at around £1.37 per month, which is split evenly between both tanks because I test salinity at the same time. But I'll add the full monthly cost to the budget for each tank to give the full picture as if you only had one tank. And now we move on to the single biggest cost of running a reef tank, electricity. Now I've set up energy monitoring plugs for both tanks so I can give you an accurate figure for the cost. But the disclaimer here is that the UK, along with most of the world, is in the midst of an energy crisis and my costs have risen 50% in the last few months alone. So I'll give you the energy used in kilowatt hours as well as pound sterling so you can work out roughly what you'll be paying based on your unit cost. On my main tank, I'm currently using 12.66 kilowatt hours per day. Now that's based on the British winter where outside temperatures currently vary between around minus five degrees and plus five degrees C, which is 23 to 40 degrees in freedom units. I pay 33 pence per kilowatt hour for electricity. So the current monthly cost of 12 and a half kilowatt hours per day is around 127 pounds. Now around half of that cost is based on the heating and on the occasional warm day we've had here, my electric use has been about half that. So in the spring and winter, the cost will be much lower. And if you live in a warmer country than good old Blighty, which is probably 90% of the planet, you can probably roughly halve that energy cost. On my small tank, it is a very different story indeed. On my main tank, I have around 30 pumps, lights, filters, and so on, all drawing significant energy. Whereas my nano tank has just two pumps, a light, and a heater. The energy consumption on that tank averages out at around 0.8 kilowatt hours per day, which works out at a cost of eight pounds per month. And again, that is significantly less on warmer days. And the final category is food. Now there are times when I'll experiment with different foods or I might feed my corals occasionally, but that's not common for me. So I'm going to be focusing here purely on fish food. On my main tank, I feed three cubes of frozen fish food per day, which works out at almost exactly 10 pounds per month. Whereas on my small tank, I only feed a fraction of one cube, but because I throw the rest of the unused cube away, I'm going to list the total cost as one cube of food per day, which puts the cost at £3.35 per month. And that brings the grand total to £242.47 for my main 100 gallon plus tank and £27.9 for my 10 gallon nano tank. Now I've left off a number of less predictable costs that crop up from time to time. It's things like extra salt if you need to do a large water change, coral dip, coral food, occasional trace elements and things like UV bulbs if you run a UV steriliser. As a broad estimate, I'd probably add on around 10% for items like that. But even without those, we still get to an annual bill of £2,909.64 for a fully stocked established 100 gallon plus tank and an annual bill of £325.08 for a nano tank, the size that is often used for a starter aquarium. Now, while that is an accurate record of what I spend, the 100 gallon plus tank in particular should be seen at the very top end of what a four foot tank will likely cost. I keep some of the most demanding corals in the hobby, which require a lot more light and flow than most corals. And I reckon the 30 plug sockets I use is at least double of an average tank of that size. But while your running costs may differ, the running costs pale into insignificance compared with what I spend on livestock. I've spent about 150 pounds on fish and corals for the nano tank so far, and it is very lightly stocked. And I have around 100 corals in my main tank that cost anywhere between 10 and 250 pounds each. And that's not factoring in my equipment addiction, which has seen me upgrade pretty much everything on my tank at least once, and in some cases even several times over. Now I do keep a full record of those expenses, so if you want to know the ongoing livestock and equipment costs of running a reef tank, let me know in the comment section below. And if it's a popular enough suggestion, I'll make another video. 
And if you enjoyed this video, as ever, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week. And until then, happy reefing.